As 2023 comes to a close, we're looking back at some of the largest crime stories we covered this year. Fox 24's Kayla Cade walks us through. From drug smuggling to murder, a lot has happened this year. Here's a look at some of those stories. Gravid resident Richard Barnett began his prison sentence on August 1st this year. He was one of more than 950 defendants charged for storming the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. on January 6, 2021. Photos of him sitting inside former U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office went viral on social media. As far as apologies or regret, no comment. You can pretty much guess how I feel, but I can't comment on it, you know. Barnett will serve four and a half years in prison after he was found guilty of eight federal charges. Mauricio Torres also went to prison after he was found guilty of battery in the first degree and capital murder for killing his six-year-old son, Isaiah, during a family camping trip in 2015. The abuse and the torment inflicted on his son by Mauricio Torres, in my opinion, clearly merits the death penalty. February 22nd concluded Torres's third capital murder trial where he received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Also in 2023, Hunter De La Garza was convicted of rape and sentenced to life in prison on January 20th. One of the saddest things is that none of us were surprised. De La Garza is a former employee at the NWA's Children's Shelter. In 2021, he raped a 10-year-old girl who was in the shelter's care. I knew um, the little girl really well. A lot of my friends knew the girl really well um, and saw a change in behavior from her, you know, when it occurred. We talked with three former employees who reported his actions to the Department of Human Services after they felt the shelter's leadership wasn't solving the issue. I love those kids and that population is so vulnerable, the most vulnerable in our community. And I think that we have an obligation to protect them because they, um, their voices have been silenced. Former medical doctor of Northwest Medical Center's Behavior Health Unit, Dr. Brian Hyatt, was charged with two counts of Medicaid fraud in November. Hyatt is also facing at least 49 separate lawsuits from several of his former patients, who claim they were falsely imprisoned and billed for care they didn't receive. I was falsely imprisoned and locked up for five days against my will, um, and then they come back to me and want me to foot the bill for that. I'm not going to you know, I'm not going to pay for their maltreatment. On May 22nd, the Sebastian County Sheriff's Office arrested one of his deputies, Daniel Ketesquillo, and fired two others, Dalton Johnson and Michael Fletcher, over an alleged drug trafficking conspiracy. Investigators with the Sheriff's Office learned that several deputies were bringing narcotics and other contraband into the county jail. Former inmate Justin Standridge described conditions inside the jail. You can get cigarettes in there, you can get weed in there, you can get pills in there. You can, you can get just about anything you want in there if you know who to talk to. For more details about any of the crimes, visit our website at fox24news.tv. In studio, Kayla Cade, Fox 24 News.